Coming up on UT10 News, a look at how the UT community raised money for cancer research. And we'll also follow how one small town celebrates the holiday season. Plus, reporter Demarius Rosalind has weekend basketball highlights and a preview of Rocket Football's upcoming bowl game. Your news in 10 minutes starts now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Devin Lutz. And I'm Amanda Beard. UT fraternities and sororities spent Saturday night in the rec center to raise money for the fight against cancer. Reporter Mark Wuwert took a walk for charity at Relay for Life. No one wants to hear the words, you have cancer, and UT students are walking and raising money to find a cure. Every year, students stay in the rec center and spend overnight playing video games, watching TV, or walking on the track. Members of the Toledo community shared their experiences of going to the treatment, the toll it took on their families, and the day the cancer went into remission. Besides my kids being born, it was probably the best, biggest day of my life. It was, it was an amazing feeling to have somebody tell you you're in remission and you get a second chance of life. It was incredible. Being on campus since 2002, the event garners 2,000 people each year and raises over $50,000 for research. About 40% of it goes to cancer research. The other ones go out into the American Cancer Society, and then about 10% of it is going to stay local through all the Toledo hospitals and the different things that the American Cancer Society provides. By packing the rec center, UT students hope to be one step closer to finding a cure for cancer. I'm Mark Brewer for UT10 News. Multiple shootings across the country have raised safety concerns on school campuses. Reporter Quincy Newsom explains rules for weapons at UT. There have been many shooting incidents that took place across the country this year. According to Time Magazine, 23 of these situations happened on a college campus. Some feel that being able to carry weapons on campus will lower this number. In those situations, uh, the, the shooter himself has got full control of that situation. He can shoot at will whomever he wants until there is one person in the crowd there that is armed. Now he's no longer in a position where he's in command. Regardless to if you believe having guns on campus is beneficial or not, you must still follow the campus laws. A person that has a valid uh, concealed carry permit can bring a weapon on campus, but they cannot bring it into buildings. It has to be locked in their vehicle. If you see anyone on campus with a firearm, they're not supposed to have it. So contact UT police immediately. For UT 10 News, I'm Quincy Newsom. After the recent Paris attacks, universities across the country are concerned for their students' safety. Some schools in the U.S. had their students return to the states after the attacks. University of Toledo students studying abroad were immediately contacted to ensure they were safe. School officials do not want students to be afraid to travel. Students that are interested in studying abroad shouldn't let things like this deter them from that experience. There is risk inherent with everything that we do, and there's natural risk inherent with any type of travel. As of now, UT has no plans to change its study abroad program. More employees are looking for students with hands-on experience as well as good grades. Reporter Eric Burden examines the role learning outside of the classroom plays in finding a job. Eric, what is experiential learning and why is it important? Well, experiential learning is a term for learning from first-hand involvement and as, as opposed to uh, books or lectures. College is the best opportunity in most people's lives to easily get involved in multiple activities and discover not only what they like to do, but how to get paid to do it. According to the Association of American Colleges and Universities, four in five employers want colleges to place more emphasis on internships and community-based field projects. Experiential Learning and Career Services Director Shelley Drulard says the hands-on approach is a great way to network and land a potential future job. Uh, you gravitate towards things you really like and hang out with those types of people, and that's, that's networking. So it doesn't have to be where I just go to a formal thing and I have a suit on and I'm handing out you know, business cards. At UT's student government meetings, President Cody Spoon enjoys the work he does for his organization. But at the end of the day, he says, one thing above all makes the work memorable. I met some of the best friends that I'll ever have. My roommate is in student government. Although I have a very deep interest in uh, representing the students, which is what I'm here for, it's definitely the people at the end of the day. If you don't have a 4.0 average, don't fret. The connections you make doing what you love could be what lands you your dream job. I'm Eric Burden, live from the UT10 Newsroom. Thanks, Eric. A UT football player is receiving national attention, but it's for his work off the field. Tight end Alex Zamolik is semifinalist for the Warful Trophy. This honor goes to the football player who combines community service, athletics, and academic achievement. Alex is involved in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and volunteers his time to help homeless and area youth. He spent last spring break building homes and churches in Nicaragua. 
I think one of the most important things we can do is serve other people and love other people. That's what it says in the Bible to do. I mean, so I really take that to heart. And so one of my biggest joys in life is seeing that smile on someone else's face. The winner of the award will be announced this evening. Legal advice is available to all University of Toledo students for just $20 a year. Licensed attorneys from Student Legal Services can assist with cases spend pending in Lucas County Courts. Enrolled students are automatically billed $10 fee each semester, but can choose to opt out. You just never know what may come up during the semester, and school is hard enough. The office offers unlimited consultations. Students who choose to opt out have no access to any legal advice, but can repurchase the service the following semester. Student Legal Services is located in room 1610 of Rocket Hall. Once a year, the small town of Ida, Michigan transforms into a holiday hotspot. I visited the celebration to see what attracts more than 40,000 visitors. The Christmas in Ida Festival was founded in 1982. Local service organizations and businesses wanted to share holiday cheer from small town America. This year's guests braved the cold weather to experience some of the activities offered such as the petting zoo, concerts, craft shows, dance recitals, and food stations. Christmas in Ida brings people in from neighboring cities such as Toledo and has even become a tradition for some. I've been coming here since um, about 20 years now, actually, since my 23-year-old is a little girl. Families wrapped up their night with the highly anticipated Parade of Lights. The parade features over 135 floats that are decorated to dazzle the judges. According to Ida Civic Club, the festival brings back childhood memories and creates new traditions that inspire your holiday cheer for decades to come. I'm Demarius Roslin, and this is your Rocket Sports Report. The men's and women's basketball team both had home games this past week, and the football team found out what bowl game they will play in. But first, UT has hired its 27th head football coach. Rocket offensive coordinator Jason Candle has accepted the position as team's new head coach. At his press conference, the new coach talked about the team's future. We're going to work diligently to continue what we've, what we've, the successes we've had and we're going to work our tail off to find the things that could make us better. Nine wins is a great season, but ultimately we didn't end up in Detroit. And I know what the standard around here is, and that's the expectation. Kendall is in his seventh year of coaching at UT. And Coach Kendall will debut in his first game as the head coach when the Rockets take on the Temple Owls and Marmot Boca Raton Bowl. The game is set to take place at Florida Atlantic University Stadium on December 22nd. We're honored and privileged to have a chance to go down to Boca and play in a, against a great football team in Temple, a um, team that's had a tremendous season, uh, very similar to our season. The Rockets have now made a bowl game in five of the past six seasons. Now on to basketball, where the men and women's teams both played at home last Saturday. Starting the doubleheader, the women's team hosted the Dayton Flyers in the morning game at Savage Arena. UT struggled from the start as they were outscored 21-3 in the first quarter. Freshman Haley Prince led the Rockets in scoring and tried to keep them in it. However, UT could not amount a comeback as they only shot 32% from the field in the loss. UT will play in the next game against Cleveland State on Saturday in Savage Arena. Part two of the doubleheader had the men play in Cleveland State. John John Williams led UT with a total of 10 points and two assists in the first half as they led the Vikings 36 to 23 at the break. The Rockets continued to roll in in the second half as Nathan Booth contributed nine of his 17 points. The Rockets went on to defeat Cleveland State despite having a season high 13 turnovers. The men will travel to Detroit for their next game tomorrow night. That's it for UT10 News. For the latest breaking news from campus and bios from all UT10 reporters, go to our website, ut10news.com. And remember, you can watch the live stream of our newscast production every Tuesday morning at 1030 on our YouTube channel. For Amanda Beard, Demarius Roslin, and all of our crew, I'm Devin Lutz. Have a great week, and stay tuned for more news from the UT campus. <laughs>